Okay, I think we're live. Um, welcome everyone to the first Firebug, I guess, tutorial. Um, what are we doing here? This is a tutorial series, which is completely unrehearsed, but we practice cloning apps with React and Firebase. Why do we want to do this? Uh, I like Firebase. I want to learn Firebase by cloning things. I want to practice using new uh, libraries that I might not be so rehearsed with and old things. Um, and I want to teach others like me, particularly when I screw up, um, you know, there may be uh, there may be some useful lessons in terms of how I resolve uh, things. I, I, I've, I've heard that um, people find it helpful when they see me resolve um, stuff uh, instead of a nice rehearsed tutorial. What we're about to do, we're, doing, we're gonna do short code along videos. Um, and I, I don't emphasize this short because it's completely unrehearsed. So I may run into trouble um, and you'll see me resolve them. And if I really run into trouble, then you'll see me stop the video, and then I'll come back the next day with a solution. Um, we're all going to try and clone something every day. I, I don't mean clone one thing every day. I mean work on cloning something every day. Uh, you can also stay in touch with uh, our website, fireblog, fireblog.netlify.com, which is just a simple site. We'll fill it out as well. This is open source. Um, and Firebug Fam, which is the new Twitter account that I've set up, um, that's that's really it. This is just an experiment that I'm doing. Uh, it's good practice, and because I'm live streaming, I have every incentive not to be distracted. <coughs> so let's go into the app. Uh, we are cloning. It's our first app, Planner.now.sh. This is a project that was created by Ryan Florence. Um, he is going to open source it. Uh, the reason I choose it is because it's basically an advanced to-do app. So there's a lot to do. Um, and there's a lot of stuff to practice with regards to user interface, to React, to Firebase. Um, so I like that. Um, I also like that. So it, I also like that it's uh, it's going to be open source, but it also ships with, um, well, it used to ship. <laughs> It used to ship with a source map, which is which now seems to have disappeared. Um, that can't be true. Interesting. Wait. Hang on. It, it just we just had it like a second ago. What, what happened? Um, here we go. Yeah. So it used it. It ships with a source map, so it, we actually have the source of this this app. So if we ever run into real trouble, we can always um, check in on the source and see what happened, see what's happening. Um, although I don't, I'm going to try not to. Um, so what are the features of this app? Uh, this app is a calendar sort of productivity app. Um, on its surface, it's, it's very much like a to-do list. Um, you can add stuff. Uh, you can add things and delete things. Um, I'm probably really mangling the, the demo of this app, um, but as you can see, it's 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 a it's a relatively robust thing. Um, for example, if I have stuff that I can't complete on today, April second, I can move stuff to the backlog, so that on April third, I can move it back in and try and finish it on that day. So that's a there's a there's a day model in here, um, as well as a backlog. We're going to have to work all that out. Um, then there's also a concept of routines. I don't think these are connected in any way to the notes. Um, but for example, if I just do a new routine here, um, make firebug tutorials, and then I check them off. I can add them. If it's a weekly thing, I can add even more. Um, and so just watch this. If I reload, I haven't logged in yet. There's a there's a there's an option to log in. Um, if I reload the screen, it still stays the same. So it's a progressive web app as well that uses some local storage. Um, one of the nice features I like, I really like this search feature. It's got a nice drop down. Uh, we're probably going to use downshift for that. Um, and I think that's about it. Um, there's an import export feature that's easy. Um, and there's a there's a login feature, and all and all this is backed up with Firebase. So, so we're going to learn how to make all of this, uh, but that's very much a uh, 
long proposition because I'm not Ryan Florence. Um, so what are we going to be able to do today? Uh, we're going to just make, make a basic to-do workflow with Firebase backend. Um, if so, if you already know that, you can skip the rest of this video, um, and then we'll start the next video with uh, figuring out the data model and the rest of the search features that we have here. Um, this is all on GitHub. It's all open source, so feel free to, to I guess, watch along. Um, and I guess I'm just going to get started. And so I, I did some practice, uh, which I guess is against the code of this, but whatever. Um, so I'm going to start with a blank slate. Uh, this is my open source folder. And I'm going to say create React app firebug planner. That's um, literally starting from scratch of create React app. I, oh, I'm, I'm assuming that you know React and JavaScript. I should probably say that somewhere in the description. Um, doesn't take too long. Go yarn. Um, so uh, and then I have a shortcut to code here. Um, and this is our friendly code. Um, I think I may have screwed this up a little bit, uh, but no matter. Um, I have a, I, I also need to get init in case that wasn't working. Um, and I need to link this up. It's already linked up. I am just not doing a very good job of making this. Um, all right, so, so, so this is initialized. Um, and, and then, and, and, and now we have a functioning create React app. So we have start. Um, always takes a while. I guess, does it? Yeah, it does take a while. Oh, there we go. So that's a functioning create React app. If I edit um, this thing over here, fire bug, uh, it's going to say that over here as well. I think. Let's see. Does it not do that? Um, all right. Why is it not hot reloading? Mm -hmm. It's possible that I don't have the right. Hmm. Oh, first issue here. I'm just going to close this because I don't trust this, that it's running the right thing. Um, I'm going to open this up again. I'm not sure if I, because I, I had a previous copy of this open. I'm not sure if I had um, the right thing running. So if I, re, if I, I just close the window. So if I refresh this, I should get nothing. Um, and if, Oh, by the way, you can see that my, what I'm typing um, in the little window over here. So I have a very nice extension for that in case you want to know all my shortcuts. Um, so if I do npm start, this time I should see it's a firebug. There we go. All right, cool. Um, I also, all right, and then start this goes. It started. Um, this is the project for firebug. Planner, we are cloning planner about now. Cool. Um, and I'm going to open a second session so that we don't keep getting interrupted. Um, wow. Okay. Yeah, I was I was I was working on on a different version of something. Um, earlier on, and that's why um, I had things initiated. So, so um, I'm going to hook things up now with git remote add origin. Um, push. Oh, in there. Forget it. Git push origin master. Oh, I need to add everything. Right Um, so all those are my aliases, git push origin master. And um, you also see me do GS a lot, which is uh, git status. And git admit is um, basically just git add and git commit. So git admit. It's a very nice syntactic 
the other things. Um, meanwhile, I still have Create React app running. So um, we're going to do a little to-do app um, over here. And let's see, OK. All right, so um, we're going to put things in state. And what we're going to put in state is to-do items. Um, and those are going to be just like a, an, an array of objects. <clears throat> so essentially, what, what we're going to need is just to plan things out a little bit. Um, every to-do has properties it's going to have. It's going to have the text of what to do, what to do is. So this is a string. And then it's going to have a status. So it is complete or not. So I guess, um, yeah, it's complete. It's nice. Because um, whenever you, you call anything, it's complete. It's a Boolean. It's true or false, right? That is complete. Um, and is that about it? I think so. Um, so if we want to plan ahead for, I mean, that's all you need for a basic to do. But if we want to plan ahead, we're probably going to want to have a unique ID. And we're also probably going to want to have an associated date, which this thing changes. Um, we're obviously not going to um, hold this, hold myself to this. But you know, it's good to it's good to have an approximate idea of what you need. Um, let's see, what else do we need? We also need, I guess, the the category it's in. So everything's going to be in a notes category, but sometimes it's, it could be in a backlog category. So we'll do that um, category. So this is either notes or backlog. Um, very good. Okay, so once we have an idea of what the to-do items are, then we also need a way to add them. Um, so let me just flesh out a couple to-do items to begin with. So I'm just going to call these initial items. And we'll just have two of these. Good, good. Yeah, we're good. And then we'll have a second one, get swole. That is not yet done, especially for me. I'm just fudging on these dates. Uh, we probably should leave it to later to add, but whatever. Um, I just like thinking about these things like that. So that lets us render things. Uh, without having to add them. So this is great. And let's um, render these items. So we're going to have an ordered list. And we're going to map these items to start. I do like the, the pattern of extracting things. So state. Yeah. Okay. So that I don't have to do this out whatever so many times. Um, items. I guess I don't have to return this. Okay. Um, and I'm going to say list item key equals to the ID. This is why the ID is useful. Let's try to adhere to better coding practices by being descriptive. Um, and I don't do a lot myself. And we're just going to say item.text for now. Start things off. 
Why not, right? Um, I do have prettier code in, installed, so if I save, um, it should rearrange itself. Uh, it doesn't like that. It's I'm being an idiot. Um, okay, so yeah, I do have prettier code enabled, so if whenever I save, it um, sort of reloads everything. Um, these are all the extensions I use. Um, you can find a lot of these under React Food Truck. Um, but these are all the extensions I use. It is a lot. Cool. Um, see, that's an action. Get good and get swole. That's great. Um, I don't like this CSS. Uh, can I do anything quick about it? Probably not. Ooh. What's this? The P tag. Mm. This is display block. I need I need this to be display on my why? Why really? Maybe I need this to be display on line. That's not. I don't know CSS. I'm just not good at CSS. Um, so we'll figure that out as we go along. Um, Okay, so we have our to-do list displaying. Um, let's uh, let's go ahead and add the dates as well. So item dot date. Uh, what does this get us? Uh, it's not a valid React child because I'm giving it an object. So date string bracket. Um, that's a that's your date, uh, and I should probably put in some sort of formatting. Uh, this is where this kind of formatting is really good, template strings, because then I don't get prettier code getting in my way. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. Versus that was not good. Always good when um, prettier code likes what you're doing. Okay, so this looks too much like an I. I am going to do whatever. We're not looking. We're not focusing on looks here, or we'll be here all day. Um, so then we also need an input. I think. Um, and there are several ways to do forms. I'm going to try and do the simplest that I know how to, but there are several ways. Um, and what this is about, how to do it, puts. Um, do I need to put in anything? I don't think I need to. Um, placeholder. Uh, Productive. All right. Let's see where that gets us. That's great. That's really great. Um, and so once we have an input, we can do a placeholder. Uh, we can do an event handler. Uh, we're using all the latest and greatest Babel plugins, so we can just do things without binding them, um, because binding is taking care of you. Taking care of implicitly. So handle um, input equals to, I'm just going to give a, I'm just, it's going to get an event. And hmm. so one thing I'm realizing is we have to decide if we are going to put things in state on submit or not. And I, I really like the pattern of doing things on submit. So instead of having an event handler for the input, I'm going to have an event handler for the form. Um, and I'll put a form around this. And for this thing, I'm going to give it a name. 
Hello, mm, new to do. So, if I'm not mistaken, is that the best way to do it? I don't know. Let's log this out. I can never remember handle form. I can never remember how to do these things. And uh, that's what we're here to, um, that's what I'm live streaming for, I guess. Um, so let's have the console up. What? You all cannot. Oh, oh God. Okay. Um, I'm a terrible programmer. You should not be listening to anything I say here. Um, look below. Right. Try not to do mashing um, as part of my. All right. So I'm going to type stuff here. And when I hit enter, um, nothing's going to happen. Stuff does happen, but stuff, but it reloads. You see that little flash. Um, so this this is where it would be valuable if you're if you're new um, and you're like, how do I fix this? Um, it's really simple. It's just you just prevent the default, which is the default for forms is that it reloads the page. We don't want that, so let's kill that. So now when I type stuff in and I hit enter, see the the, the results of the console log which is muy convenient. All right. Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to ask it for my target of the event, which hopefully is the form, which is fantastic, because from the target, I can also get new to do, which is something I named the input. And from new to do, I can also get the value that was submitted. So um, test one, and it's going to give me test one. So this is directly from the form, which I submitted here. And I can programmatically clear that if I want to. So um, I actually am going to go ahead and set that to, to blank once it's submitted. OK, so I don't handle. And so notice I don't handle the input state in my component state. Um, because I don't have to, I really just care about the form submission event. Um, this obviously is not ideal if you want to say whatever the person's typed, um, and in case the, the site crashes or, nav or the person navigates away, um, you can save that. But we're not doing that here. OK, so now that we have the, the value of whatever we're, we're, we're getting, um, we need to Let's just call this submitted value equals blah. Um, we need to format this and add this to the state. Um, so it's dot set state. Um, I do like to use the callback format. So I guess we just call it previous state. Um, and what am I adding? Oof, my, my brain is just locking up right now. OK, so we have the previous state. And we're going to, oh, what am I doing? I'm returning an array, right? State's an array. No, state's not an array. What am I doing? I am returning, since state is, since state is just an object with one thing in it, um, I can safely return to do items, uh, an object, and with the new items and the uh, new to do, uh, which I haven't defined yet, but I can easily do that. Each of these an object. Um, let's get one of these guys in. OK. Um, well, so I don't like what this is, because I want, I'm, I'm going to operate on, on the previous state. So I'm going to sh shift this, make this 
and do its own thing and define my new to do inside this callback, which is a much neater way of doing these things. Okay, should be false on default. Should have previous state. Yeah, all right. But I should have current items equals the previous state dot to do items. And then um, this will obviously cause a conflict in the IDs, uh, but I'm just being loose, uh, fast and loose with um, my choices right now. Um, and I'm just going to put in arbitrary notes. So these items, this is not used. This is not serious right now. Um, and need you need to check to check for a conflict, or if you let Firebase do everything for you, it's just going to give you the ID once it stores and stores it inside. Um, so then the only thing we have left to do is return this, which is current items and then need to do. Okay, I think that's it. I'm going to need to delete as well. Prev state is not defined, so I'm doing something here. That's oh, the capital letters. I'm always going to get you. Test two. I was supposed to do something there. Mm hmm. Ah, um, I should not just return the Hey, that's three. Whoa. Ah, there we go. I'm already running into the ID issue. Uh, so that's not a good idea, but we'll just run with it because, um, yeah, it's fine. Um, I think I think we we I think we should also do a okay. I I, do, I really don't like this list item thing, so I'm just going to change it. Uh, <laughs> uh, hopefully, it won't take us too long. <clears throat> just bear with me. Um, you see the effects of using a plugin over there. Um, and instead of a list item, if um, so, the VS Code helps me rename the closing tag um, once I'm done. Although this is really long. Okay, so so that's. So now these are all these things are all divs, um, and instead of having combined date strings like that, can actually have rows and and and, and columns and basically use CSS grid. Although that's really ambitious. Um, okay, so I think so. What you've what you're seeing me do here is being overly obsessed with making things look good, even at a stage where things don't matter. So I think that's something that um, happens a lot with programmers. Um, and and like I, I even know I'm going to throw most of this code away, uh, but I'm still doing it, which is bad for me. So don't do what I'm doing. Um, but since I already, I'm already kind of committed, um, let's go ahead and finish it off. All right. Come on. I have a fragment here. Doesn't like that. Doesn't know what fragments are. That's very naughty. Fragments are good for you. Use them liberally. Um, right, happy? Good. Um, every Child should have a key. So my new my new children are fragments, so I should move my key up. That should make it happier. A good gets full. And instead of yeah, why not? Let's uh let's engage in a little bit of CSS. So two grid. 
again, I'm fully aware that this is um, not a core part of the app, but uh, I do care about um, how things look as they go, I guess. Um, and it won't take very long, I hope. <laughs> um, Ah, all right, let's, let's take the opportunity to actually make this look semi decent. Semicolon expected. Um, grid auto flow. These be rows, these be column, I guess. All right. Does that get me? No, it doesn't like that. Oh, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So now I have a somewhat decent test. Blah, blah. I still have the ID conflict thing, but I'm not expecting that to, to last very long. All right. So the reason why I refactored is, is just so I can get a delete uh, thing in there. Um, so I'm just going to add a third column to my item, and then I'm going to add a uh, delete button. Um, so I guess. Input type equals button. And then I'll have a click handler. Delete handler equals to um, yeah, I'm going to need okay. Oh, well, I'm just gonna need the index of the thing that's being deleted, and I'll just, I'll just delete it, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, let's just be very careful. God, I feel like someone's just like watching me. Well, like, I know like, I know no one's watching this right now, but I just, it feels like I'm being, I'm coding under pressure. Which is weird because I I know I'm not, but I, it just feels like it. Hmm. So I guess technically I could just give it. I could just splice it and it'd be fine. So if I just splice this out and I I just give it hand it back, right? That would just delete it, right? So. So on click equals, um, I do need the index. So I'm going to ask for the index of the item over here. And I'm going to say it's dot delete handler index. Um, I think I will do it uh, unless I'm an idiot. I don't know what inputs are. Um, I'm gonna try using button anyway. I've heard that it's more accessible. Uh, please tell me if I'm wrong. Good, I'm so good at deleting things that I deleted everything. Um, no, I just deleted the things with conflicts, I guess. Uh, what's going on over here? Ooh, I'm just, okay, A, B, C, D. If I delete B, everything, what? Ah, I have to splice and leave one. Right. So A, B, C, B. If I delete B, only B goes away. Fantastic. I know how to make a to-do list app. That doesn't look very good. Um, <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and um, so all the changes I made in, is are in CSS and JS. Um, these are my aliases. They're going to look a little bit alien. It's just short for git add and git commit. So it's, that's git admit. I like that. Um, so initial to do and then git push origin master, um, which if you've done any git, you should be aware of. So you can see that in this latest commit. OK, good. All right, that took a while, but at least you've um, I for I guess React beginner-ish people and, and people getting used to my coding style, 
Um, that's just what I've done for setting up the initial um, to do. Now we're going to connect into Firebase. Um, and the best way to get started is in the docs. Um, you want to get started for web. And then you want to you want to have all this config um, set up. Working with React, however, you're going to want to use React Firebase. Mm -hmm. There is React Firebase. Boom, boom. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about the two database solutions, um, but we don't have to yet. So let us install Firebase. What do I need? Jeez. Um, blah, blah, blah. OK, so I've installed Firebase. Um, it's in my node modules um, somewhere in the pile. Uh, I think I also need to install Firebase. Do I have Firebase? I'm just, just going to install it. Um, yeah. And then I also need to do this Firebase initialize app thing, which I think I can copy from here. Here, yeah, that just that just shows up here. Um, so uh, I'm gonna start my Firebase project. So I'm just gonna call this Firebug Planner. Like I'm gonna call everything. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Uh, and while I do this, I'm just going to start connecting things. Um, is this unmanageable? I think this is fine. Yeah. I think this is fine. We might want to extract it at some point. OK. So I'm importing React. Um, I do need to import Firebase and connect Firebase. Uh, have, has it started yet? All right, good. Um, so if you look at the docs, what it tells you is like, you know, add all this stuff. Um, but I do know my way around this. So I'm just going to go ahead and do things. Um, so it's, this is meant for you in case you're not using, um, if you're just using like index.html. But here, we're going to just chuck in only the relevant code. Uh, I'm going to call this. I'm going to call this credentials base.js. Let's get in here so that this doesn't clog up the screen, essentially. Um, yeah. I don't need anything else, do I? Right? All this Firebase config so that I, it's Firebase.js. It's too close to just the raw Firebase, so I don't like um, the closeness of that. Okay, um, what do I what do I want from here? I want this, right? Uh, which is just the that was not what I intended. Which is just the config itself. And I'm going to pass it in according to the React Firebase docs. I'm going to pass it into, well, I've already passed it in. What am I doing? God. Um, and then I need to connect it. So that's nice. Maybe I will refactor this after all, because refactoring things is nice. Um, OK, I don't, I just, I don't, I don't know how to. If, you, if you're better at VS Code, just let me know how to do this. Um, I'm still figuring things out. Components, whatever. Yeah, components. Um, I'll just call this main for now, because I can't think of names. Um, and let's refactor things quickly because 
probably a good idea to do that. Um, don't need, uh, yeah, I'm going to connect things here. I do need a provider. Where's my provider? Do I not have a provider? I knew I was missing something. Ooh, okay. Um, all right, so so let's let's um let's just like not add Firebase right now, um, and let's just make sure this refactor goes all right. So this is uh, initial items, um, which I'm also going to just put in a separate bucket. Why not? Um, and I'm also going to declare all this junk. Hmm. Does it not let me do that anymore? I don't know. Who knows? Um, Oh, doesn't like it. Wow. Oh, of course. I need to call it a class. Um, this is Sean is bad, bad at coding 101. Okay, so here I have absolutely nothing, and I'm going to have main. Whatever this is, and I'm going to import main from slash components slash main. Wait, Excel in day. I'm going to kill the repeats over here. Um, don't feel too much. Um, another place to use fragments. Boom. Boom. Did you dial me? No? Good? Get swole. We're still getting swole. Um, that's all good. OK, so we have made things into an app component and then a, a, a smaller main component down here. Um, why I did that is a to have everything in, in like a nice little, you know, small little chunk. B to have a place where I could put it, put it this provider to use. Um, so you need it's kind of like the React Redux provider. You need to provide it to the whole app, and it uses context to to propagate um, all this stuff going on. Um, I do also need Firebase to work over here. And the Firebase config, as we last discussed, uh, needs to be provided. So I don't actually need this initialize app thing here. But I do need to export this config because um, I'm going to import it over here and supply it to initialize app, which has all this database URL stuff and what have you. Um, so that's for that, and that goes in the Firebase app. Then you go from Firebase app, and you copy whatever they have, which is the provider. I don't need it for that header piece, so I'm just going to put it in here. Um, that. Uh, we are now hooked up to Firebase, although there is going to be no visible change. Um, what happened? Oh, you do not like this. I don't understand why you're so strict about it. Ah, fantastic. All right, so I don't need a fragment anymore. What else? Uh, Firebase, I don't need Firebase anymore. What else? I don't need connect anymore. It's technically true because I don't connect anything here. Um, all right, so now this app stuff is 
something I don't have to look at anymore, and this config stuff I don't have to look at anymore. And uh, we still have a working app. Um, <clears throat> but now we got to hook it up to Firebase. And that's the tricky bit. OK, so let's see how they do this. They want you to use the connect function and define this um, connect HOC. And you define this sort of mapping function from props to whatever you want to do. Um, so let's do that. I think in order to do this, I am going to have to do away with my initial items because uh, my initial items is just going to be the, whatever's in the database, um, which may or may not have anything. So let's have the let's import the connect function, which is I'm being extremely lazy over here. Um, and this and and the credentials for Firebase are being provided right through context because uh, we set it up in app over here. And the connect function, I, so I don't like this because you don't explicitly have a thing uh, called map state to props or map Firebase to props, and um, that can confuse people. Um, so if you if you are not confused, then good for you. Um, but I'm going to make it explicit so that people can follow along. Right. Um, then I'm just going to do whatever I want here. Um, so I'm going to comment all this out. Um, and so this is for data, right? Like if I just want a reactive data stream, um, that's probably a good thing to keep around. And then, uh, and and this is the field on the database, and this is the the props that are that are going to get passed on to do list. So, to do list, which is the component, is what I've called this component. Now is a thing called props, right? Um, and I guess when component does mount, see what I did there. That's another extension, which is very nice. You just type CDM and you hit enter, and you got all that. Um, do want to set state with this dot props dot um, to dos. That's what uh, is fed in as to dos over here. Um, you do want to also call it to do items so that all the code that we just wrote gets super messed up. <laughs> So the render we actually kind of don't care about because everything's in handlers, and we just need to update the handlers, um, and then we and we also need to to write the updating code, right? So um, the way that Firebase does this is uh, through references with addresses. Uh, if you if you're confused about this, um, here's where you read more. It's going to be under the real time database, so that's what we're using for now. Uh, I do think we're going to start using the uh, Firestore endpoint just because that's the future. Um, and you go to get started and read a little bit about how this, the data is structured. Um, they do use a JSON tree under the hood. And the, uh, the address is essentially just using slashes for different levels in the JSON tree. So this would be messages slash one slash m1 slash name. Um, and that's what uh, they've got over here. Um, and you can do things like set and read and write. Um, so this is probably the most relevant thing to what we're about to do. Um, but the map Firebase to props function gets a gets a ref, right? So instead of doing all this stuff that is Firebase.database.ref, we just get this ref function and then we just apply a string, um, which is, which is what you see over here. This this ref function then returns an object where we can say dot set for example, and then it, and, and it and it you know it takes uh, your data. I guess. All right, so let's add to dos. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's add to do, and then we'll have. Um, 
Oh, how do you get this ref? Oh, we get this ref here. Okay. Uh, we'll get. We'll add to do. What do we? What do we really need when we add to do? We just need the submitted value, right? So I'm essentially re like rewriting this form instead of putting things in state. Um, I don't even need state anymore because the props are just going to update for me. So I'm just going to delete all this stuff. And instead of in the render, instead of uh, this dot state, I'm just going to call it this dot props. Um, and instead of, instead of mapping it to to do's, I'm going to call it to do items. So this hopefully really drives on the fact that this side, the left hand side, corresponds to the component state, and the right hand side component corresponds to whatever you call it in inside Firebase. Um, so in so this is accessing data, right? And over here, I'm I'm, I'm making a a, a function um, to modify data. <clears throat> Um, and both are fine as, uh, as, as far as that Firebase process is concerned because connect checks if it's a string or if it's a function and, and acts accordingly. Um, that's what's going on in the hood. It may be confusing the first time if um, someone's never explained it to you before. Coolio, I think I am about to write a ref. So let's look up how to insert because I think you can just push stuff. Um, because we're just going to try and push. Push. Hmm. I don't want to set, I just want to push. I don't think this is the way that you push. So I want to push um, a piece of info without an ID, and I want Firebase to give me an ID. This thing is telling me that I have to push to get a key first, and then push again with the new key. This seems very roundabout, so I don't super trust this. Yeah, look, you can you can push stuff inside here too. So that's that's missing in the docs, uh, and that could confuse people. So this is actually better than <laughs> than, the, than the raw Firebase docs, um, which is not super surprising, and that's why we're doing this. I think all right. So so look, they're they're doing exactly what we're doing here. So let's just follow. We have um, except over here, we don't want to just push a to do. We have to form the new to do, and then give them the to do. Uh, the IDs are going to be given to us. Uh, let's see if let's see where they have documented the ID, ID, ID. Hmm. Do I know what the ID is? I guess it's called the key. Okay. So everything has a new key, right? Every everything is a unique. Right, let's search for the word. Ah. Everything has a key, and then there's, there's a value to that key. All right. So so instead of ID, we may need to call things. Um, keys. All right, so we're not going to worry about the delete handler for now. Um, and the and and this should be a proper function to form a new to do and then push it to um, the Firebase address of to dos. That will then update this thing, and that will update this prop to do items prop, and that will update. Uh, this thing over here, and that will reflow and update the the whole um, to do list. So I think that's what we need. Um, that we need to then fix up um, our handle form to to use this. So what we're going to do over here is essentially just call this dot props dot handle form. 
just add to do. That's the value that we're to doing. And then we can set it to blank if we want. So the handle form is now three lines because all the state is being handled on the server side. Um, so I think that should be good. I probably have errors. Let's go fix the errors. Uh, cannot read math of undefined. All right, so this is potentially undefined. Um, we need to put some sort of guard on it. Okay. Initial items is defined but never used. That is true. I don't need this anymore. Goodbye. Ah, permission denied. What has happened? I have a database over here. Mm, test mode. OK, we'll start in test mode. No, that's dangerous. I'm publishing this online. What am I doing? Um, OK, uh, so, so when you start the database, um, it's a good idea to set your rules um, and your, your security rules, because you know essentially anyone can access this config and try and spoof you, right? And then try and send uh, data to you. So you want to lock that down from the get-go. Um, so I'm choosing the harder path here. And hopefully, I'm not going to trip up on it, because I'm not super familiar with the rules. But essentially, you want to have rules for like validating um, and checking um, you know, what, what gets sent in. Mm. So this will be true for all users. Um, I don't have any authentication. So essentially, I'm just, yeah, well, all right. I'll let anyone who submits enter this in. But this is a bad default to leave it in. Um, so don't expect me to leave this in after this is uh, after this session is done. <clears throat> um, so I've, I've set public, and they put a warning there for you. Um, OK, so this is my empty database. Um, I'm going to refresh the thing, test. Um, so something has submitted, and this has refreshed. I'm going to guess that this is fine. Um, but what happens here is that map is to do items. Not map is not a function, um, and that is something to ex something to explain about Firebase, which is the Firebase real time database. Although Firestore doesn't have this issue, so Firestore. Uh, is like sort of their next generation database. Real-time database stores everything as objects. So even if you think that it's an array, it's it's actually an object. Um, and you're going to have to deal with that um, somehow. So uh, that's what, let me log this out just to prove it to you. So console. So if I see my console right now over here, uh, the object that I get an object, I don't get an array. So if I if I try and do dot map on this object, obviously I have an error. Um, so that can be easily fixed. Uh, yes, object values. You know, I'm trying to learn this. Like, I I know I can do object dot key, but what is object dot values? Gives me an array. Oh, really? Oh, I need object entries. No, I just. Mm. What do I want? Okay, what do I want? I want object dot. I don't care about the key. I need object dot entries. So what object dot entries gives you? It's both the key and the value of the object. So key, value, key, value, key, value. Um, so object.entries, to do items, dot map. And that will give me item and index. Um, and I have to put parentheses around this, I think, if I want to do this fancy destructuring thing. Um, do I have a working app? I do not have a working app. All right. 
So this looks like a problem with the date, uh, which has been stored as a string. Um, in fact, I don't have any date here at all. Why well, don't have it have any date here? Uh, I'm gonna have to figure this out. I, I don't know what's what's going on here, but I, I currently do not have a date. So to show what I have, which is a null. And I'm also going to have to show my key. Ah, the reason I don't have my date is because um, the the format of this is key and value, right? So I have the I have things the opposite way. I have value and and, and key here. Um, so I need uh, to to put this the other way around, right? So this will all match up. Um, I now have a Firebase key instead of an index, so I, that that gets handled. Um, and I don't really care about delete handler here, although that's invalid right now. Um, okay. Ooh, look at that. That's nice, isn't it? Uh, test two. All right, that's added. And over here, I have uh, the first entry and the second entry. This is test two, and this is test one. Magnifico. Okay, now let's figure out why I don't have a date. Um, that's a, a question about my attractiveness, but also have text is complete and category. Text is complete category. I don't have a date. Um, <clears throat> so I think. Uh, I, I think it only accepts strings. So I think that's what's happening. Um, so I'm going to just make it a string. And then that should print well, I guess. Uh, but I had to blow away the, the original database just to uh, make it make sense. Cool. Test one, test two, test three. And it's adding as expected. All is well. What a fantastic show. We're almost done. I just need to tidy up the delete function. Let's figure out how to do it. So I need to make a new function here, delete to do. And I'm going to get a key. And I need to figure out what to do with that key. <clears throat> I'm sure they have something here for deleting. I'll remove on it. All right. So just literally ref to do's. Key. I'll remove. And also delete by specifying now. But removing is the, probably the easiest. Um, and my delete handler. Can literally just be this dot props dot dot del to do dx. Well, it's not really idx; it's misleading. So let's just call it key. Ah, oh, I think I think we just did it. I think we have an app where we can delete things and add new things. Right? There's no conflicts because all the keys, all the children have different unique keys guaranteed by Firebase. It's updated over here. I'll tell you what, like I can add stuff here too. So um, new thing, new item. Whoa, what happened to that one? New item and category. I actually don't care about the category. I care about the date, which is a string. And I care about the is complete, which I actually don't care about again. I care about the text, which is hello from the console. So notice, I'm going to spit this out. Oh, God. Notice that when I add this from the console, it's reactive. So I could be any other user. And it just shows up over here. And that's how Firebase works. It's reactive. So there's one single source of truth. And all the clients, 
which are the, the apps that you're making respond to that. So that's very nice to have. Um, and we may need to stretch that um, as things go by. But for now, it's a very convenient thing to have. So have a play around with this. That's our first episode. Um, it may be, I don't know. I, uh, is this helpful? I, hopefully it is. Um, oh, let me commit that to a directory or something. Done with to do Firebase. Um, and yeah, if that's helpful to you, let me know. Uh, if there's things I should be coding better, let me know. But otherwise, I think we have finished a very basic to-do app hooked up with Firebase. Boom. Thanks for watching.